Okay, this uh, series is about final authority. I would like to replace the videos that I have done, trying to make them more interesting, I guess you could say. There is a very fine line between <clears throat> a sincere person seeking the truth uh, from any source, even if the source seems to be boring, you know, where a person is just monotone and they have no fluctuation in their voice. And a person who's sincere will seek the truth in any source. <clears throat> uh, we live in a day and age where people's attention span is so short, where they're used to watching you know, change here, change there. You know, if you observe television, you'll see that there's movement every second, every no more than five seconds. The American mind today can't seem to pay attention more than five, 10, 15 seconds. But sincerity will uh, drive or motivate a person to seek the truth. So this series is about final authority. Final authority is the bottom line issue of any belief, uh, idea, law, sports, life, uh, any relationship, final authority. Who has the authority to determine the beliefs, the rules, uh, the standards, right or wrong, good or evil? Okay, uh, have the natural laws of life accidentally or universally been developed through time or did the creator put them okay so final authority that's the bottom line in let's see in mark chapter 11 verse 28 to verse 27 the chief priests scribes and elders the religious upstarts of the day of jesus christ the uh, religious authority of the day challenged uh, jesus christ in mark eleven twenty eight. And as they said unto him, by what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? Now, if you read through that, you'll see that Jesus Christ uh, pu puts a question on these clowns, and they couldn't answer, so he didn't answer their question. Now, that conversation is recorded three times in uh, the Gospels, so that puts it at a pretty high priority uh, because we're dealing with authority. Okay, in Proverbs 29, <clears throat> verse 2, this uh, short little proverb shows the difference of two types of authority. Okay, there's two types of authority, re referring to man or how people handle their authority. Proverbs 29, 2 says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. So the two basic types of authority, one is an unvarnished truth to receptive minds. Okay, where this individual is confident in his authority and he will give the truth, hoping to persuade the will of another to accept the truth. This is voluntary cooperation. This is a heavenly authority. The one where the people mourn or complain or don't appreciate is the authority that is mostly used in life. It is brute force or a manipulator. Okay, Jesus uh, showed in Mark chapter 10 how the usual Gentile sometimes calls it leadership when actually it's dictatorship or a tyranny. In Mark 10, uh, in verse 42, Jesus called unto them, called them, his apostles, to him, and saith unto them, Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority <clears throat> upon them. But 
so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So Jesus said, okay, the way Gentiles most of the time do it is they do it by a club. They club people. Brute force. Okay? Uh, a manipulator. This is antagonistic. And it's coercive. And it's hellish. You see, where a person who tries to live according to the authority of heaven, like the Lord Jesus Christ advised, he recognizes that every person is a sovereign of their own, meaning you have a sovereignty over your will. You are acting uh, independently without outside influence, okay? So, but yet what the Lord has allowed us to do in the New Testament as a leader or trying to influence people is we are limited to the art of persuasion, okay? If we have some form of authority or position of authority, we, uh, the person wisely will use the truth <clears throat> give the truth to receptive minds and pray that they will voluntarily cooperate with the truth. Unfortunately, most are brute beast. Okay, in the Old Testament, in Leviticus chapter 6, shows, it's interesting, it's kind of tucked in here, the two usual ways that government officials uh, use their authority. Okay, I'll tell you a story. It happened in Lancaster County. There was an, a county official that <clears throat> wanted to go on the back property of an Amishman's property. And the Amishman really didn't want him to go back there. But the county official insisted, uh, I've got a badge. Oh, oh, oh. I got a badge. I got a badge and, you know, a costume. I'm wearing a special costume. Now, the Amishman really didn't want him to go back there. And so, but the guy was pretty much insisting. And finally, the Amishman said, okay, well, I'll let you go back there. But I'll just let you know that I let the bull out back there about this time of day. And he said, well, just show him your badge. And so the county official declined to go on the man's property. You see, his badge was his club that he was trying to manipulate this man to do something where the, the sovereign owner of the property did not want the man on his property. Okay, in Leviticus chapter 6, verse 1, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul sin and commit a trespass, okay, you're trespassing, uh, against the Lord and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep or in fellowship or in a thing taken by away by violence. That's how the kingdom of heaven operates according to Jesus Christ. It's by violence or hath deceived his neighbor. Okay, so there's the two methods that a government official, a Gentile, lords it over the people that he thinks he has authority over. Deception and violence. It's kind of funny, you know, in, in a public school they have what's called zero tolerance for violence. But you know how the public school operates? By violence. Compulsory attendance. You don't have a choice in the matter. It's forced. Okay. Uh, in Fiji, they have a public school, but it's not forced attendance. But the parents want the children to go, so they have attendance, but it's voluntarily because the parents want it. Okay. But no, here it's compulsory. And then it's forced curriculum. Who, who's smart enough to know what every kid's supposed to know? Oh, somebody in government. And then, how do they get funded? It's force, it's violence, 
forced. They have a zero tolerance for violence, but yet they're funded through violence and deception. And now, if you doubt that, don't pay your property taxes. See what happens. You'll experience the violence. You see, that's how Gentiles think authority is to be demonstrated. Manipulation and or violence. Brute force. Now, Jesus said there's another way of doing this, and he says by being a servant. In the founding of this wonderful country, the colonists feared the brute force of a religious structure in Europe, the Anglican and or Rome, and then they fled the brute force of King George. So when they established a governing structure, they wanted the ones who are delegated in a political environment to maintain their public service as a public servant. So what they did is they took a couple of principles out of the Bible. One was an oath and bond, where you find this in Numbers 30, verse 2, where an oath is where the public official, uh, you know, signs this uh, insurance policy that they're going to abide by their uh, oath of office. Unfortunately, the majority do not because people don't know what to do about it. And then the other thing is it found in Isaiah chapter 60. Okay, in Isaiah chapter 60, if you look at verse 1, it will say this, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Okay, the glory of the Lord is uh, the millennial kingdom, the glorious return of Christ, and then he sets up his millennial kingdom. So this is going to describe something about his millennial kingdom. And in Isaiah chapter 60, in verse, the second half of verse 16, it says, I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. And then he tells them this, For brass I will bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver, and for wood brass, and for stones iron. I will also make thy officers peace, and thine exactors peace righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in the land, and so forth. Some of us are old enough, maybe if you see the old Andy Griffith uh, shows, that on the sheriff's car, it said, peace officer, peace officer. He gets that right there. Out, they get that out of the Bible in Isaiah 60, officers, peace now what are they called? Law enforcement. Why? That's how Gentiles think authority is to operate. You see, the Lord says we are, if you're given a position of authority, you are a minister or a servant to the people that you serve. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ did. You see, where... You have authority, but the authority is the truth, and you use the truth to persuade others who have a sovereign sovereignty over their will where they voluntarily comply with the truth, where the people mourn because it's brute force and or manipulation. That's the norm, the Gentiles. That's the norm. A lot of pastors are what? They're bullies, brute force, trying to get their way. Now, maybe their way happens to align with the Bible. Maybe it doesn't, but, oh, I'm in a position of authority. Well, Jesus said you are to be a servant. You are to be a servant. And so uh, that's just a starter of this idea of final authority. And we'll see uh, actually how the Lord Jesus Christ and God in the Bible uh, displays their final authority.